Hey, boys and girls, it's that time again. It is art time with Mrs. B. And today we are going to be doing like a mountain range. And we're going to do it kind of like a collage. We're going to be using uh, a certain type of color, analogous. Or you can, you can experiment with tints. I don't care what kind of medium you use. Tints, though, you normally have to use paints for that or oil pastels because tints is when you add white to a color or shades is when you add black to a color so basically it just makes it darker or lighter so i don't care what you use but use one of the three analogous which are groups of three colors that are next to each other on the color wheel and remember there's primary secondary and then tertiary which is in between so you would probably be using one of each if you were doing analogous colors but you need to look that up. I was going to show you one, but you know, I forgot to look it up. But anyway, so I could show you like a picture. So the way you're going to start is you're going to need three or four pieces of paper. And I am using, um, I'm going to show you this for a minute. I'm going to take this away. I am using white paper. Okay. Just regular white, like computer sized paper. It's in a sketchbook. But do you see these mountain ranges that I drew? Right now, they definitely look like mountain ranges. So I went from the bottom, I went a little far up, and I kind of made it wavy like a mountain range. Then I did the second one, and then I did the third one because I still had room at the top to make like a, a low one. Now, these are going to be cut out. So when you color them, you're going to start with the bottom. And let's say you did like I do. I used all purples, okay? And I added some black to mine. So basically they're shades of purple. Plus just plain old different colors of purple. I use crayons. So I colored this whole mountain range in. Okay. But when I came to this one, I definitely want this line, right, for the mountains. So what I did was I took the next purple I was going to use, like a lighter purple or a medium purple. And I made a line as close as I could get it with my crayon to the tops of this one right here and I went across and then I just colored in with my other purple all the way to my little line but I don't color down to the mountain because we're going to cut these out okay so I just kind of gave myself an easy line across so it looks like this okay here it is you see it let's pretend like I didn't draw that other piece this is the bottom I drew all the way to the bottom let's say this one was the next one whoops nope Let's say this one was the next one. See, I just kind of made a straight line. I would get it as close as I could to that mountain. Woo, not like that. Right there. And I would color it. And then maybe if I had room for one more like that one up there, I would color it almost all the way down to this mountain, straight across at the bottom. And then I cut them out. And they're going to look like this. Okay. It's okay if they're not perfect. You just want this mountain range top and I'll show you why in a minute because we're going to overlap them or overlay them or whatever you want to call it. So after you color them, you're going to cut out your mountain ranges and they're going to look like this. Okay. And actually before you cut them out, you want to take a black marker and outline them. So over this line, so I'm kind of backtracking here, you're going to want to do a very thick black marker line or black crayon line and then color in your purples or your greens or whatever it is you're coloring with okay <clears throat> so when you're done with that and you have them cut out you're going to have some really cool pieces left over that look like this this is where i cut them out okay not this one obviously but this white one okay this is just the cut out piece well guess what can i use that i think so if you turn it around it really does look like a mountain line and so you can use this one so I would go back and color this piece and outline it a little bit better with black at the top and then use it. So let me show you what I'm going to do now. On another piece of paper, I made sure to pick a purple because I went with purples. And I made sure it didn't match my last mountain range. So this is not exactly the same color purple because I mixed it with a little blue. As the rest of my purples for my mountains because I don't want them to blend okay even though I have a black outline so then you start taking notice I didn't color all the way down because my mountains I don't need to that's extra work 
So then what I'm gonna do is I am going to start arranging my strips however they work best. So right now, I'm gonna go like this. Can everybody see that? Look, isn't that cool? I just kind of slip it underneath. So can I do, I wouldn't wanna do this one because then I would lose half my mountain, it's pretty skinny. So I'm gonna do this wide one. And I'm just gonna slip it underneath. Remember I cut these out and I, so see that white spot right there? You don't want that. You want these to come down to where you don't see any white spots. So do you see how that is? I would pull this whole mountain range down so it was the bottom of the paper. Okay, so you see how that kind of just overlaps? It's really cool. So then I would do the next one. And so you get kind of the picture that I've overlapped them quite a few times and that you can see the layers going on here. I started from the very bottom of my paper, okay? And I'm gonna like pull them down till I reach my sky, okay? And then look, here's this one that I was telling you about that you could flip over, could the white one, and you could outline it and make it purple and just put it right behind there. So it sticks out right now, but you could color it and put it however you wanted it to, and it's kind of interesting. You just want to make sure that this last one that you do is not too close to this color, okay? So they don't blend. But anyway, once you get them the way you want them, and you can play with it. Like if you want to swap them out and put one right here, you know, and another one behind it like this one, you can do that. But you're going to glue them down, okay, on top of each other, right on this paper that you colored, where you colored half of it. See, there's my black mark because I'm goofy and was outlining with a black marker but you want a thick black line thicker than mine probably and this is what I glued them down on so I started at the bottom I started overlapping got them like I wanted them and then I have this really cool you know little mountain range picture where it was all overlapping and stuff and it looks like this basically so you just have to work with them a little bit I have one hand because the other hand's holding the camera so it's really hard to arrange these but I think you get the idea. So step one, you are going to draw your mountain ranges. Step two, um, I would say go ahead and outline them in black, which means trace over your pencil lines. Step three, you're going to color them in your different shades or tints or paint or whatever you're doing to them. Um, I picked purples. And then, of course, your last page where you're going to glue them down on, you need to color that as well, like at least halfway down or three-fourths of the way down um, for the sky. And if you wanted to do a blue sky and just do mountains that are, you know, tints or shades or whatever, you can do that too. So then when you arrange these, they're going to just cover up the line and you won't be able to see all this white spot. But you're going to glue them down and you should have this really cool little mountain range project. And um, that's basically it for today. I just wanted to show you that. This is a mess because I only have one hand. But you get the picture. Um, these were some of the ideas for colors. And that's about it. Thanks for tuning in. And pretty soon we'll be making a sculpture out of paper. So tune in for that one. Bye.